The MBN is one of the most critically important infrastructure projects in our nation history, and I, jo I join with those who have said that we should do it once, do it right, do it with fibre to the home. The MBN, if done right, has the capacity to significantly redress the inequalities built into this great continent of ours through the tyranny of distance. No other infrastructure can deal with decentralisation and provide a fillip to regional communities like the NBN and high-speed broadband. The NBN is the opportunity to allow a great flourishing within regional and rural communities by levelling the playing field with net metropolitan Australia by providing a critical service and incentive for professionals, families, education and medical institutions, businesses, industry and capital to relocate or establish outside our nation's great but congested cities. I believe we have the capacity and obligation to provide equitable access to broadband. We as a nation should be working within the universal service obligation for broadband that parallels the USO that underpinned our telephone network, the last great telecommunications infrastructure rollout. But we are not, Madam Deputy President. It is a national disaster, a national, in fact, international disgrace that lays the, 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 and a disgrace that sits squarely at the feet of our bungling Prime Minister, the Honourable Malcolm Turnbull. Long after his stupid and cruel government has been consigned to the political dustbin, um, <coughs> policy makers, communities and industry will be paying to rectify this failure and cleaning up the, m the mess. And yet we hear nothing in this House from the state government. Imagine that you had a federal government that was designing, uh, paying for and implementing a highway network like the Pacific Highway or inland rail, and the state government was blind to the rollout and the failures of it. It is an absolute disgrace. And, I, and just as this government has bungled both state and at a federal level energy policy, NBN, mark my words, if you want to get the, the community upset, turn off their internet. We are about to see in the next year a great conflagration in regional and rural New South Wales that will cost the National Party because people will not be able to get the internet speeds that they even have now under ADSL2. Just recently, and, 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 and the objectives of the, of the NBN were outlined in their statement of expectation. And people, if you across the detail, they said that the, the communities would get at least 25 megabits a second. That has been so quickly superseded. The expectation in other communities, in the OECD, even in regional area, um, uh, in developed countries, Madam Deputy P President, is for gigabits a, a second. Kenya, with a GDP way less than Australia, now has internet speeds greater because they recognised they needed to roll out a comprehensive broadband system. The NBN has failed. They said when it, since, since 2009, when they initiated, it has been absolutely butchered by the coalition government uh, after the expectations uh, set in place by the, the, the Rudd and Gillard governments. They said there would be proactive and timely engagement of stakeholders, and yet the NBN is rolling out and seeking People do not know it's actually happening, and there's communities rising up. The the, uh, the Regional Rural and Remote Communications Coalition uh, has formed the New South Wales Farmers, the CWA, are saying they want a universal service obligation, service guarantees, mobile network access, fair and equitable broad, broad, broadband. And it's coming to the attention of the New York Times. The New York Times recently, a headline, how Australia bungled its $50 billion high-speed internet rollout. We're a joke. And the government will be held to account because the NBN goes live in just a few months and in my community in Bellingen the council's alarmed, the chamber of commerce is alarmed in an area that should be booming with people coming in, they're pulling back because there's a great digital divide and it's a digital divide brought to us by the Turnbull government.